Hello, how are you? It's Jeannie. I hope you're all doing well. As for me, I am doing very well. We're heading into some cooler weather and I love that. I love transitions of seasons. My favorite season is spring because of the renewal and the rebirth and the color coming back and the light coming back. Um, but I also love transitions to what's next, which is why I love dawn and I love sunsets. Um, so we're transitioning here in Texas, not far from Houston, and we had our first cold weather. I mean, up until just a couple of days ago, it was in the mid-80s, and these past two days have been down in the 40s and 50s for the highs, so it was just like, bam, you know, a very quick transition. But I looked at the weather forecast and it looks like we're going to be back up in the high 70s in the next couple days, maybe even the low 80s, but I like the 70s. And so let's see what else is new. I'm wearing um, the jewelry by somebody I follow. And I think many of you follow her too, Yona Yinton, and that's the name of her YouTube channel. And I just love this girl. She is just so beautiful and calming, and she's got such a lovely spirit. And so I splurged and bought some of her jewelry, and I'm so excited. I love it. In her videos, you can see how she photographs it, you know, in nature, against a stream or that lake. And it's just beautiful. So I feel like I'm wearing a piece of her piece, a piece, a chunk of her piece. So that's, that was my big splurge for myself. What do you think? I think it's beautiful. So, Yona, um, J-O-N-N-A, Yinton, J-I-N-T-O-N. She's just lovely. Give her page a look. She's got millions of followers, but when she makes a video, you just feel a sense of goodness in the world, a sense of goodness on the planet, and she is that. Her and her husband, they're both so cute. I just love them. And so, if you haven't, go over to her channel. Say that Jeannie B. ASMR said hello and sent you. Today's video is one I get a lot of requests for. You know my favorite decade has been the 70s. Because... You know, those were my teenage formative years when I just had the most fun ever and life was still simple. But then the next decade came the 80s. And for me, my experience, they seemed to go quite fast um, because I was so busy, you know, uh, just so many things in life. My big takeaway memories of the 80s, besides kids, you know, having kids and starting a family and all that, was the things like Michael Jackson, big hair, big shoulder pads, you know, the big shoulder pads and poofy things and ruffles. Um, big hair, big makeup, lots of makeup. Um, music changing, you know, uh, different kinds of music. Um, things like E.T., 
you know, I think that was, yeah, that was the 80s. Yeah. And they're good memories. They're good memories. But that decade just flew by for me. Um, I remember taking the magazine called Country Living. And the decor for that, coming out of the 70s, you know, the oranges and the gold, that harvest gold. I would say the 80s with regard to decor and decorating was kind of like that hunter green or those deep, you know, um, deep blues or in the checks, you know, the, the check patterns. And then it went into it in the later 80s. It became the pale blue and that peach or salmon color and ducks or geese. And I remember in my house I had geese, white geese on blue, it was the wallpaper border on like robin's egg blue walls. You know, very white and blue with peach. And then the big poofy curtains, you know, the great big poof, stuffed with tissue paper. <laughs> and, um, yeah. So, anyway, very, very trendy. So, I am going to show you a book I got. And again, it's a book, but it's put out by People Magazine. And it is a compilation of celebrating the 80s. And, oh my gosh, one of the things about these books is I don't look at them beforehand. So my reactions are very organic. And I just saw on the back... Mary Lou Retton, and she was America's sweetheart for the Olympics, you know, and um, she just got out of the hospital almost dying in ICU with a horrible form of pneumonia. So seeing her in that million dollar smile is really cool. And there she's with Eddie Murphy, and he looks like just a baby. Look. I'm going to walk through this book celebrating the 80s. It's People Magazine's compilation put into a book and give you my thoughts and memories. And I'm sure many of these pictures will jog some memories for me. And um, so I hope you enjoy it because I know a lot of you ask for the 80s. So here you go. So let me get the camera overhead and I will walk you through the 80s. Okay, so here we are. People Weekly celebrates the 80s. <laughs> I hope you're able to relax, if anything, just to my voice. And if you can watch and review the pictures with my chicken hands, <laughs> I mentioned this a long time ago that I pointed out that I have chicken hands <laughs> they look like chicken feet <laughs> to one of my daughters and she says mom I'm never going to unsee that so let's go 
So this came out. So this came out, it doesn't say the date, but it was $32 US dollars. Wow. That's pricey for something like this. I bought this, I don't know, half.com or one of those sites. And again, thank you to all those who contribute to the um, buy me a cup of coffee because all that goes straight to these. Okay, so it starts with the years of living fabulously. And that is another memory of the 80s, is the excess. And it's really the first time, you know, in my lifetime that such excess came on. You know, and it was shows like Dynasty and, you know, the oil boom. And, you know, these things that really were in your face, depicting lifestyles of the rich and famous. That was actually a program, lifestyles of the rich and famous, and I can't remember that guy's name, Leach, Norman Leach? No, Robin Leach, Robin Leach. So here she is, an older woman. She was 68 when she started in, um, Dynasty, and look how awesome she looked. Just so. Here she is meeting Princess Diana in. That's Joan Collins, by the way, meeting Princess Diana in 1992. So, all about Joan Collins. And her sister, of course, is Jackie Collins, the author. Diane Carroll. Now, Diane Carroll was on Dynasty, but she started off as playing a nurse, and I think it was in the 60s, maybe even in the 70s, and I can't remember the name of it. Maybe some of you will. I have not looked through this, so all my thoughts are just as I see these pages. But I loved Diane Carroll in that nursing show. She was the star of that nursing show. Oh my goodness. Doing the splits. I used to be able to do the splits, but not after high school. And look at gold lame. Gold, gold, shiny gold. That shiny gold in lots of various outfits with the big shoulders. Okay. It doesn't say when this came out. This was copyrighted 2001, so this is 10, 15 years old. Okay. Princess Diana. We believed in happily ever afters. Diana was on the cover of everything. She was so hounded. Now, in retrospect, knowing what we know now, I loved her. I thought she was beautiful, but she was also the cause of a lot of her own chaos. You know, alerting the press to where she'd be and you know, things like that. I think getting into the spotlight and being an insecure young woman, it was a lot. It was a lot of mental and emotional stress. And we all know Prince Charles's heart was always elsewhere with Camilla. And you know, right or wrong, you can judge that. But the heart is what the heart is. And the heart loves who the heart loves. And, you know, that's life. So I do not judge him harshly for that. You know, it, they had their share of chaos together because they were not well matched. 
and Madonna, of course, like a virgin. That, the 80s, oh, I know what else is very 80s to me, is um, that channel MTV. And that is when she was very popular and, you know, a lot of the bands back then became very popular was through MTV. Arnold <laughs> Schwarzenegger. He was very, um, he was just coming off of his Conan the Barbarian movie. Oh boy. It's so funny looking back at this, knowing what we know now about, you know, some of his antics and, you know, with the law and, you know, the, uh, the allegations of him drugging women. I love Felicia Rashad. I just have always been a big fan of hers. And she was just in that movie. It was on, um, was it Netflix? The Gilded Age. And I loved her character. And I swear she has not aged. <sighs> Jealous. And Dallas. Larry Hagman. Who shot J.R.? The big question. Did you all watch Dallas? So, let's see. We celebrated the land of the free and wept, oh my gosh, in the home of the brave. The Space Shuttle Challenger explosion, January 28th, 28th 1986 was one of the most widely witnessed tragedies in U.S. history. Seven astronauts perished, including the New Hampshire school teacher, Krista McAuliffe. And, um, golly, I know exactly where I was. This is one of those days where you know exactly where you were. You remember if you, if you saw that. And then John Lennon, John Lennon, the assassination, wow. And then this was Hands Across the Water, ah, Live Aid, oh yes, Live Aid. You know my takeaway from Live Aid was Queen's performance. Eddie Mercury, and he was, you know, yeah, that was something else. Oh, David Bow, oh my goodness. And of course, thriller, Michael Jackson. What an amazing king of pop, pop star he was. And it says he was a crowd pleaser. He felt strange every day around regular people, but on stage he felt safe, you know, and that's just because of how he was brought up, you know, he could become his, you know, superstar on stage, hmm, very interesting, and his dancing, oh my goodness, and, you know, the thriller dance, I mean, in the 80s, everybody knew that dance, you know. Jodie Foster was a, a contemporary of mine, I would say. I think she and I are about the same age, give or take a year or two. And Tom Cruise with, um, golly, was Top Gun? Ah, uh, Risky Business was 1983. I don't remember when Top Gun was. I think that was later, right? He's just a kid. Look at that. Just a kid. Oh, and Mel Gibson. I thought he was so cute. He was. Look at him. He's just a doll. You know? And Arnold. Arnold Schwarzenegger. He was good looking too. Cindy Lauper. 
a loopy, lovable misfit, and she bopped till she dropped. You know, she just embodied eccentricity and being weird, and it's okay to be colorful and big and, you know, just out there, and I love that. Same thing with Boy George. And the sad thing about Boy George was, you know, he really got into a bad, you know, drug addiction. But um, I loved his music. Very, that kabuki makeup and, you know, very, um, you know, just embracing color and style and fashion in his own way. Yoda, Yoda, Empire Strikes Back, 1980. Yes, that's what that was. And E.T., oh, E.T. We always told our first daughter that she looked just like E.T. when she was born. I swear to God, she did. Same eyes, same kind of head. <laughs> Even today, she knows, you know, that that's what we said. Very E.T. in a cute way. Okay, two other hunks. Richard Gere and Kevin Costner. Oh, he's still a hunk, I think. You know, in um, Yellowstone. Do you guys watch Yellowstone? We did. We binged it. And we started watching it much later than anybody you know, else and it's because my hu husband is from Montana and his family is from Montana and so we'll be watching it and he'll say oh I know that you know my grandparents lived down that road in Livingston and you know so the Livingston Valley and he went to school in Bozeman so cute Kevin Costner oh Mr. T he wore these lots of gold necklaces. He was a tough guy, but apparently he had a heart of gold and um, he battled lymphoma during a lot of you know, his cameos and whatnot. Oh, Alien, Sigourney Weaver. She was badass in that movie, Alien. And the Brat Pack, the Breakfast Club. Now, yes, this was very, very popular in the 80s. Molly Ringwald and Judd, what was his name? Judd Nelson, yeah, Ali Sheedy, Demi Moore. That's kind of their big rise to fame was in the 80s. Oh, and Prince. In 1984, the album Purple Rain came out, and he did a movie as well. But um, I remember when he did that song, um, Gonna Party Like It's 1999, thinking 1999 was so far away. Eddie Murphy. <laughs> he started off doing Gumby skits on Saturday Night Live, and I swear, those were hysterical. He had such a natural humor to him. Bad, bad boy humor, but funny, funny, funny. And then he got popular in the Beverly Hills Cop. Very funny, very 80s. On Indiana Jones, of course, very, um, you know, here he starts in Star Wars, started in Star Wars in the 70s, 1977. And then Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know, was his next big adventure film. And Back to the Future, oh, Marty McFly. Oh. Michael J. Fox. Oh, and 
Whitney Houston. I remember I went and saw her in 1980, let me think, 1984, maybe 85 or 86, down in LA or Orange County somewhere. So good, so good. And Lionel Richie, oh my goodness. He was, his music was so popular. Three times Lady Easy, uh, Golly Truly. Hey, Shogun, Richard Chamberlain and Shogun. You know, they did a really good job in making this movie from the book. I read the book first and then the movie came out and it was, both were very good, which typically when I read a book, I don't like the movie. And that wasn't the case here. Oh my goodness, Crocodile Dundee. That was very popular in 1986. Music of the Night, Cats, Phantom of the Opera, Evita, Andrew Lloyd Webber was just amazing in turning m musicals into the most popular things with great music, fantastic music. Oh, and here we are, Princess Diana. You know, we all hoped for the best, but like with any marriage, you know, they had issues. They had problems from the very, very beginning. And like I said, I do not blame them on Charles. I don't. I do not. I think it, he was pressured to check a box and get married to this, you know, in, into this role. And Camilla didn't fit. She wasn't allowed into that role. And they were purposely separated. And that's just a tragedy. And look, here they are together now. And she persevered after all of this following in Diana's footsteps. She was an enemy, you know, and some people still hate her, which is really sad because the heart is the heart, right? But Diana was beautiful, demure, sweet. I mean, just a fashion icon. I loved, you know, I loved her. I, you know, it's funny. People say I look like her a lot, a lot. Someone came up to me in the restaurant the other night and told me that, the waitress did. And then, of course, came Fergie. Oh, my goodness. She was a bit wild for the, for the royal family. But, you know, every family has its, it has its strong personalities, its wild personalities, you know. Every family and the royal family is no different. The Grimaldis. Now, the Grimaldis were from Princess Grace and Prince Rainier. And she died, sadly, in a car accident. And so, anyway, here's Princess Caroline and her husband, um, Casaragi. St um, what was it? Stefano Casaragi. Prince Albert with Brooke Shields. I guess they dated for a while. But this funeral broke my heart as well, just as Princess Diana's did. But he loved, you know, Prince Rainier loved Grace Kelly, you know, Princess Grace so much. Look at that broken hearted face. Look. And Carolyn Kennedy, oh, she was beautiful. And young John Kennedy Jr. Such a tragic family this was. With what happened to him. Mm. Reagan, 
became president. And, um, you know, there was a lot of positive change with that. It just seemed, you know, say what you will in my channel is not political. It is not. But there were, you know, and I love Jimmy Carter as I think he's a fab, wonderful man. But there were so many dead end days in those 70s. And the malaise of the 70s changed in the 80s. So, yeah, interesting. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. You know, these are things where you re you do remember where you were, you know, the times like that and the wall coming down. Um, I think it was 89. I mean, that was oh, huge, you know. And the thing about Reagan is he had a good personality and that's why people liked him. Oh my goodness, this was the hockey game of all hockey games. And I remember I was in upstate New York in a little town called Fort Plain, Fort Plain, New York. And the, um, the Olympics weren't, the Winter Olympics weren't too far from us during this time. And this was up in uh, 1980 in Lake Placid. And it was such a dream team. It was such a dream team, this win. And then the fall of the Berlin Wall. You know, I've been reading a lot about this because when we were in Germany, it was actually Unification Day. And I just thought, I'm really ignorant with what happened here. How the divide of Eastern and Western Germany happened after the war and the politics of all that and then the undoing of it and the sacrifices people made trying to get from the East to the West and the protesting and just how it all started to come apart and for me as an American as an insulated girl, you know, growing up, I just took freedom for granted. I just took it for granted. Rambo. Sylvester Stallone. I mean, boy, these guys got into such shape. Oh, and Hulk Hogan. Oh my goodness. The wrestling. Yeah, he used to wrestle and I never liked wrestling. I never liked boxing, fighting, wrestling. Uh -uh. I don't like it. I don't like physical violence. Oh, here is a woman. Jackie Joyner Kersey. She was an amazing female athlete. And she took, I think, seven events. She took the silver in Los Angeles in 84 to golds in a row in 88 and then in Barcelona and um, her sister-in-law is Flojo, remember? So, oh, here she is right here. Yeah, she was a sprinter. Amazing athlete. Look at that body. Carl Lewis, my goodness. One of the greatest sprinters and long jumpers. And Mary Lou Retton. She was just a cutie. I'm so glad she's okay and out of the woods, I think. Bruce Springs, no, look at this. I get a CD. It looks like it's never even come out of this. Oh, it's music of the 80s, so Take On Me. Who was that? Um, uh-huh. I Need You Tonight. Let's see, Need You Tonight, Need You Tonight. Hmm. Whip it, <laughs> whip it good. <laughs> Into shape, shape it up, get it straight, <laughs> go for it, it's not too late to whip it, whip it good, do 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 do, let's see, you might think, two of hearts, Gloria, urgent, ride like the wind, out of the blue, 
working my way back to you. Hmm, interesting. Just so some of the music of the 80s. So Bruce Springsteen, Bob Seeger, Tom Petty, John Mellencamp. We had all these things. Trivial Pursuit. We loved Pac-Man. The girls all had Cabbage Patch, you know, dolls. My Little Pony. Walkmans. Rubik's Cubes. And the boys loved Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. My goodness. They don't have Care Bear. She really forged a path, I think, for women performers and, you know, the entertainment industry. She worked hard. She worked her butt off, I think. Okay, the bad girls. Imelda Marcos. Um, I wish I had her shoe collection, but boy, she, um, what, her husband, you know, um, what was his name? Ferdinand? Yeah, Ferdinand Marcos. And she was, I mean, they just, I think, ruled the Philippines with an iron fist and just very corrupt. Same thing with Leona Helmsley. And I think she went to jail. I mean, her and her husband's um, hotel empire. She was uh, the queen of mean. The Queen of Mean. The first time I ever heard that was with relation to her. Okay. I remember her, the Mayflower Madam. And she had the black book of, you know, top secret list of prominent clients that she would fix up with. You know, high-end prostitutes. I mean, like, high-end. And she got busted. So... She had a $5,000 fine, but she went off to write a great best-selling book. So, um, interesting. And Vanessa Williams, you know, she was the first black Miss America, was it Miss America? Yeah, the first African-American to, um, to capture the formerly Lily White title. And uh, some old photos caught up with her, and she was just humiliated. But you know what? She persevered and created a career for herself, so good for her. She was beautiful. Oh, and Christy Brinkley. She epitomized the California look, I think. You know, the very sun-kissed, blonde hair, blue-eyed, big toothy smile. Um, you know, that's, that's what she epitomized and that's what they marketed, marketed her as, you know, swimsuit girl. And Brooke Shields, you know, I remember the big eyebrows came back and I could never get mine to grow back after the 70s. <laughs> so. Oh my goodness, look at this. Donald Trump, even back then, that's right. And he was married to Ivanka. Ivanka Trump? Or is it Ivana? I can't remember. Ivana Trump. Ivana or Ivanka? Which one is, one of them is the daughter. And he was a great big lavish hotel builder, millionaire, billionaire. Ah, here's his wife, Ivana. And Ivanka was the daughter. That's right. Okay. So, anyway. What? Wow. That's going to be an interesting tale when we someday look back at this whole generation. The whole Wall Street. Yeah, that was a good movie, Wall Street. 
Lee Iacocca. He restored Chrysler to its former glory. You know, the whole car thing of the 70s. You know, Chrysler was in the pits and he brought them back. And Ted Turner, he really um, forged cable TV as, you know, and, and brought it on CNN, the Turner Network uh, station. And I, I think at one point he used to be one of the biggest landowners in the U.S. I know he owns a lot up in Montana. Bill Gates, look how young he is. Oh, and that's another thing about the 80s is really, um, I remember it in the 70s because I grew up in the Bay Area, all the tech companies that were coming in North San Jose, you know, the Silicon Valley. And, but in the 80s, that's when everybody started getting, you know, computers and, you know, um, and these, look at these, the floppy disks. Okay, let's move on. Okay. Michael Milken, oh my goodness, I remember some of this. Just capital, um, high yield junk bonds and kind of scamming, I think. Anyway. And Ralph Lauren, oh yes. He was a hard working, self made man. Um, and he, he just reached immense success. Um, his polo line of clothing. We were just at the store the other day and bought some polo things for my husband. So. Okay, Wolfgang Puck. Yeah, he was kind of a celebrity chef. Um, I don't remember this guy, Jay McGinnery. Hmm. I don't remember him. Oh, and of course, Oprah. Yes, Oprah. She lost all that weight. I remember this show, and she came out in a big um, dress, like a wrap, and then she took it off. And this is what she was wearing underneath it. But later... She gained weight back, and she talked about how unhealthy she was. So. And she got into acting. Oh my good goodness, The Color Purple was one of my favorite movies. Some other gals from TV, J Diane Sawyer, Jane Pauley, Vanna White. Oh my goodness. Martha Stewart. Oh my goodness. I tried being Martha Stewart, but it was hard. <laughs> I had to learn how to be me. Roseanne, who was kind of a crabby, you know, she brought in the crabby gal, you know, what, what was the name of that show? Uh, what was the name of that? I can't remember it. Hmm. I can't remember the name of that show she had. The Connors or something like that. Okay, Sandra Day O'Connor becoming one of the Supreme Court justices. Um, let's see. Oh, and Margaret Thatcher. The Iron Lady, I think she was called. Yes, the Iron Lady, the indomitable Iron Lady, woman, uh, Britain's first woman prime minister. Say what you will, you know, politically, but that was a hard job. So, Geraldine Ferraro, yeah, as uh, on the ticket with Mondale, she for vice, pres uh, vice president. And then Aquino, and she survived many military coups before leaving office in 92. And Tina Turner, oh, what a, what a light she was. What a huge impact she had on the music scene. 
Whoopi Goldberg, and she's still making Whoopi today. And Richard Simmons, oh my goodness, the exercising show he had on TV. Oh my goodness. Oh, Tootsie with, uh, what was his name? Dustin Hoffman. Dr. Ruth. This cute little Dr. Ruth gave advice on sex and marriage and... <laughs> Here we are, Dynasty. The glam, you know, the glitz and the glam and family drama. Dynasty was one. Dallas was another. And there was another Knott's Landing I liked. Ah, Dallas. Knott's Landing. <laughs> I did not watch Flamingo Road. How funny. They came just as I thought about them. And the movie Dirty Dancing. You've seen this, right? Footloose. Oh my goodness. Kevin Bacon. Flash Dance. Oh, that was a good movie. Made everybody want to dance. This was such a great show. Moonlighting. It, they were detectives and they, it was funny. I loved that show. General Hospital. Um, I used to watch that um, in the 70s, not really the 80s. Cheers. Oh, golly. Don, um, um, Don Johnson and Melanie Griffith, and their, their daughter was Dakota Johnson. You know, from Fifty Shades of Grey. Bert, oh my goodness, Bert Reynolds and Lonnie Anderson. <laughs> Mick Jagger and Jerry, um, what was her name? Jerry, Re uh, Jerry Hall. Jerry Hall. She was a model, a Texan model. And then, <laughs> Hef, he, how many times was he married? I don't even know. And then Billy, um, Joel married Christy Brinkley, and they were married for a while. And Ringo Starr and Barbara Bach. And the big, a big story in the news was this boy in the bubble, and oh my gosh, it was so sad. He was literally in a bubble, and it was, he's uh, 12 years in germ-free isolation due to this rare um, and severe immunodeficiency. Gosh. Okay, and then a surrogate mom, Beth Whitehead, fighting for her daughter... Um, because it was, oh, yeah, what was it? Okay, so with this, it was surrogate parenting starting up, and so this New Jersey biochemist, William Stern, and his wife, a pediatrician who carried the gene for multiple sclerosis, paid $10,000 to Mary Beth Whitehead, um, to bear their child, but she decided she didn't want to give up the child. And so they, she and her husband snatched the child and ran off to Florida. And so the Stearns sued to get control of the baby back. And it was a 22 month fight. And there was a 30 day trial, 32 day trial. And the judge ruled in favor of the Stearns. She broke the agreement. Nowadays, surrogacy is not as big of a deal, although I'm sure there are still bonds that a mother would feel, you know, or a the surrogate would feel, but the contract is the contract. And baby Jessica in, Mid in Midland, Texas, this little girl fell down a well, and it took 58 hours to dig her out, and she came out alive. Everyone was glued to their TV over that. Family Ties was a great show that we all watched. Mr. Mom, um, Three Men and a Baby, and 30-something. I loved this, the show. I, I loved 30-something. I, I almost wish they had reruns of that. Oh, look at 
Wow. Liz and Dick. Liz Taylor and Richard Burton. Oh, and these two. Um, Henry Fonda and um, Kate, uh, Catherine Hepburn. Kate Hepburn. That was the movie on Golden Pond with Jane Fonda. That was a great movie, too. Oh, Risky Business. Oh, Tony Cruz and Risky Business. And the most famous scene is when he comes sliding out in his white shirt and his little whitey tidy underwear and does his little dance. Oh, fatal Attraction. Whew, that, was a, whew, that was a freaky movie. And Miami Vice, now that epitomized the 80s, just like these colors. These guys dressed really sharp and drove a nice car. It was Miami, you know, colorful. And big hair, big color, big music, big drugs. Oh, gosh, Gary, what was his name? Gary Hart, and he was a presidential nominee, and he got messed up with her, and pictures of her and it ruined his career. Same thing with um, Oliver, uh, what was his name, West? Oh, what was his name? North. <laughs> North, not West, North, Ollie North. Yeah. Okay, some other relationships that did not make it. Very rocky. Mike Tyson and Robin um, Givens. Oh boy, William Hurt. That oh, did you guys see Children of a Lesser God? Ooh, that was a good movie. Um, Sean Penn and um, what was her name? I can't read. Oh, what was her name? remember her name. Oh, Tanya Tucker and Glenn Campbell. Oh, John DeLorean. Ooh, he got in big trouble doing drug deals. And his wife was Christina Ferrari, was it? Uh, what was her name? Uh, yeah, Christina Ferrari. So she divorced him. And he was the maker of the DeLorean. Remember that? John Belushi. What an amazing, amazing comic. But sadly, you know, into drugs and that's what killed them. Okay. Let's see. I don't remember. I kind of remember these Klaus von Bulo. Kind of. Jim and Tammy Faye Baker. Oh my God, they were scamming that Praise the Lord Network or PTL show. Oh, mail fraud, 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 fraud. And he was seeing prostitutes on the side. It was as dirty as dirty gets. How the mighty have fallen. I remember this on TV. Jimmy Swaggart's crying face. <laughs> Disco. Okay, so this was um, the Talking Heads and MTV launching in 1981. And these were kind of like the people, you know, the new wave of people on it. Devo, B-52s, Elvis Costello, who I do like, The Pretenders, Blondie and the Cars. These guys were very popular on um, MTV. Wham! I had the biggest crush on George Michael. He just, not only was he beautiful, but he had a voice. And he has one of those voices that that one, it's on Instagram, I can't remember the name of it, where they isolate the voice and you hear only him singing and it is so beautiful. Um, I didn't know he was gay, but I 
when I found out, I still loved them. You two, Genesis, oh, they were a great band. Duran Duran, I saw them. The Police, Sting, of course, became very, very famous after the Police. And David Bowie really um, got popular, and I think also because of MTV, it helped relaunch him. Oh, Rock Hudson, my mom had a crush on him, and he died of AIDS, and um, he had to keep that hidden, you know, that was in an era where you could not be out at, at his age, and, you know, he, um, yeah, just very sad, very, very sad, he was a handsome guy, too. guy. Okay. Oh, this boy with AIDS. He was a hemophiliac and he got AIDS from a transfusion. And so his school kicked him out because he had AIDS. People slashed the tires of the car in his family. His parents, he was taunted. They had to leave the town. And I mean, for a tainted transfusion. And he became embraced by people like Elton John. And this this boy, he died when he was 18 years old. But he brought a lot of enlightenment to AIDS, a lot of awareness to AIDS. Oh. And Gilda Radner. Oh, I loved her. Rosanna Dana. <laughs> she was great. And she died of uh, cancer, I think ovarian cancer. And of course, Karen Carpenter. Oh, so anorexic. Look how thin she was. And she just had such a dark image with, you know, health. Um, you know, she was just tormented with this eating disorder. She basically starved herself to death, age 32. 1983. And that brings us to the end. I love her smile. Mary Lou Retton. And his smile, too. He's such a goofball. I loved him. Still do. What do you think? And of course, the lawnmowers start up. <laughs> well, I'm wrapping it up. I wish you well. Why is somebody driving by taking a picture of my house? I'll sign off for now because I know the leaf blower things are gonna start any minute. I wish you so much peace, so much wellness, so much love, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye for now.